Привет, друзья! Как дела? My name is Fedor and welcome back to Be Fluent in Russian podcast. Today, let's talk about some verbs with prefixes. We've done a lot of listening practice before. Now it's time for us to learn some vocabulary today. I have 20 verbs that all have a certain prefix. They all have different ones. Well, we have like maybe three words per prefix, on average, I would say. And I'll mention their meaning, how they're used, and also maybe they're meaning outside of just the prefix itself maybe like what the stem means and what kind of effect the prefix will have on on the verb the reason why i'm so fascinated with prefixes these days is because we are working on the course for our b fluent class and uh, it's prefixes just diving into each prefix its meaning what kind of different meanings it will have i actually never even went so deep into the prefixes myself as a as a native i kind of just you know, know what the words mean. <laughs> but then when you, I guess, get a bit more analytical and you start to think about stuff, okay, how does this prefix affect this verb? What kind of meaning does a prefix have? It's pretty actually interesting. And I've said this before, but prefixes is what makes me love Russian language so much is because, you know, if you know a stem of a verb, and we're going to talk about that a bit more when we look into each word, you can you don't have to learn new stems of the word you can combine that word with a certain prefix to get a certain meaning and then swap that prefix for something else to get a different meaning so it's really cool how that works it makes it a bit more succinct and a bit more expressive i would say so let's get into the first verb for today the verb is включить. you might have heard this before включить means to turn on a light Computer, phone, включить. The prefix is V, like a V in English, V, but in Russian it's V. But you might hear me say, instead of saying включить, I say включить as if it's a F there. Like my name Fedor starts with an F, включить. The reason for that is because it's in the beginning of the word and also after it we have two consonants. So it's going to be hard to say включить than just simply включить. And um, that's that. Включить means to turn something on. Ключить by itself doesn't really exist. I would say it only exists with a prefix V. We're going to cover another prefix with the stem a bit later. And sometimes with some other ones. But without it, ключить doesn't have its own meaning. We have those stems sometimes in Russian that don't exist outside of being used with a prefix. You might hear a word like nyat, for example. Nyat doesn't have its own meaning, but panyat means to understand. Zanyat means to borrow. Prinyat means to accept, things like that. So um, we have those stems sometimes, and I'll mention that whenever that's appropriate. Next verb with the prefix v is vlubitsa. And vlubitsa means to fall in love. Vlubitsa. Я влюбился в тебя. С первого взгляда. Я влюбился в тебя means I fell in love with you. We say I fell in love in you. And с первого раза from the first sight. Okay? Я влюбился в тебя с первого раза. So, в means in. And любиться doesn't really have a meaning. I'm sure that you know любить means to love. But влюбиться means to love, to fall in love with someone. What's actually pretty interesting is that we, if we don't say влюбиться, and we just simply say влюбит, that means to make somebody fall in love with somebody else. Like, they didn't fall in love with a certain thing, but you made them fall in love, okay? It can be an object, it can be a person. So влюбиться means to fall in love yourself. Then we have another prefix, в is впустить. Впустить means to let in. Впустить, to let someone in, to let some air in. Впустить. Пустить means to let or to let go. Пустить. But впустить with the V is to let in. Okay? V overall, as a preposition, not a prefix, but a preposition when it's by itself, it's used to say in. Like, I can say в доме, in a house. Maybe в телефоне, in a phone. V by itself has a meaning of in. And so when we use it as a prefix, it carries those kind of char characteristics too, that meaning as well. So 
включи to turn on, kind of to turn in a little bit, right? So like has a bit of that meaning. Then влюбиться, to fall in love, впусти, to let in. So v is going to have a general meaning of in, typically. If you don't know, if you don't, if you see a stem that you know, and you see it get combined with a v prefix, I can guarantee that you can just simply assume that it's an in kind of a meaning. Okay, I guess I'll take a bit of a pause here. We have 17 more verbs to cover, but I wanted to mention something. If prefixes is new to you and you're a beginner in Russian, you might see, you might have seen from these podcasts, from our videos, from the homework that we post on Telegram, is that I'm very heavy on vocabulary. Is whenever we teach, especially during podcasts, it's I'm, I focus a lot on vocabulary. And if you don't know the prefixes yet, I do urge you to check it out and understand what they mean. But prefixes is one of the tools that we can use to build vocabulary, especially with verbs. Prefixes get combined with verbs the most. And so, yes, I do urge you guys to learn the words that we're going to cover today, especially considering the fact that when a learner learns new words, it's typically tangible things like objects, like a cup or a pen or phone, a computer or colors, right? Or family members, things that we can imagine, things that we can think about. But verbs get the least amount of attention. Also, verbs with prefixes get even less amount of attention. And I think that that's a pretty big mistake when learning vocabulary. And also, we were kind of new to the podcast. I guess we had like a hundred episodes already, but compared to our YouTube career, quote unquote, we haven't been really doing podcasts for that long. And so what I've realized is that on YouTube, vocabulary is not really like a flashy topic to watch a video on. It would be kind of boring to sit through, okay, this word means this, this word means that, this word means the third. But vocabulary, and that's the reason why vocabulary gets overlooked, because it's such a mundane task to learn vocabulary day in and day out, go through your flashcards, go through the list of words that you want to learn and things like that. And that's why vocabulary is, is a very, I guess, boring part of language learning, but it is what languages are. I can just tell you the the amount of times when I spoke to a learner in Russian and the only reason why we could speak freely in Russian and I could go full speed without really filtering my words is because of their vocabulary. Their pronunciation might be a bit wobbly, their grammar might be a bit shaky, but if they know a lot of words, the conversation flows so much easier. So if you haven't really paid attention to vocabulary before, I do encourage you guys to spend at least half of your time that you spend on Russian studying vocabulary, which can consi- consist of two things. When you acquire new words to learn, that's one part of vocabulary. When you get the words to learn to add to your vocabulary. And the second part is to practice the words that you have already added to your vocabulary. So you make a list of words. That's your first part of the job. And the second part of the job is to study those words. That's my task to all of you. And I hope that this podcast today can do some of that for you. And you can find interesting verbs that you didn't know before that you can add to your vocabulary. So let's continue. We Actually, let me know. Guys, when I post this uh, podcast, if you're not on that Telegram channel just yet, you can always find the link in the description. And that's the best way for us to really communicate and to for me to get feedback from you. If you want more vocabulary, if you find these podcasts to be very useful or that you can listen to them for a long time and you find like the results in your Russian are showing up from these podcasts, text me, respond to this post on Telegram or just simply reach out to me on Telegram and say if it's good or not. Also, if you don't find them that useful, if you're like, oh, it's whatever, I think I have a pretty good vocabulary learning strategy already, also message me so I can have both sides of the argument pros and cons people who are for it people who are against it so if you have any feedback on the vocabulary podcasts please do let me know and we can actually turn this podcast into more of like a when i'm by myself without victoria it's a bit more vocabulary learning maybe we'll see that, that's just an idea that i had so let me know now let's move on with our list after all of that <laughs> talking let's move on to prefix na 
Not typically means on by itself as a preposition, so sometimes it's going to have the same meaning, but not always. And it's not going to have the, this meaning with the next verb, nachadica. Nachadica means to be located somewhere, nachadica. I can say, где ты находишься? Where are you located? Where are you now? Где ты находишься? So, nachadica as a verb means to be located, to be somewhere. Next is наступить. Наступить means to step on. Let's say you're in a subway and you step on somebody's foot. Я наступил на ногу. I step on the leg, on, on, on the foot. I can say, oh, извините, извините, я не хотел. I didn't mean to. Наступить means to step on. Also, a second meaning of наступить is to come when it comes to like a time period. When the winter comes, the summer comes, the holidays come. That's also is talked about with наступить. I can say наступило лето. The summer has come. Okay, right now, if you're listening to this, it's the 15th of June. That's the post date of this podcast. Наступило лето. The the summer came. Okay, that's наступить. And the last word with this prefix на is нарушить. Нарушить means to go against uh, the agreement. Uh, uh, it's it's to Commit a certain crime, нарушить правила means to break the rule. It's like to break something, to break an agreement, break a rule, break law can also be that. Um, Я нарушил правила дорожного движения. Я нарушил правила, I broke the rule, дорожного движения of the traffic or traffic rule. I broke the traffic rule. So I broke the law of the traffic, right? So нарушить means to go against. Also, I can say нарушить договор. I went against against an agreement. I broke the agreement. Нарушить is to disturb, to break like a rule or law. Нарушить is used for many different meanings, and so it's typically it typically has a negative connotation. Нарушить I can also say нарушить покой to disturb the peace. Okay, нарушить правила I already said to break the rule. What else? Нарушить that's about it, I, th- I think. Нарушит means to break, to disturb, or to go against the rule or agreement. Pretty useful word. Next prefix is при. При typically has a meaning of doing something slightly. Not fully, but slightly. As you can see right here, при встать. При встать means to get up slightly. Let's say you're sitting down on a chair, and I can say, я при встал. I got up a little bit. I didn't fully extend my legs to be vertical. I just got off of the chair. That's brief start. Start by itself means to get up completely, fully. I was sitting down or laying down. And then I can say, yeah, встал. I got up. Now I'm standing vertically. That's it. But brief start, brief start means to get up slightly, just to get up from the chair. Your legs are still bent. <laughs> okay, brief start. Similarly, приподнять. Приподнять means to pick something off the floor. A good example when that's used as a complete, I guess, sentence, I can say, приподними диван. Pick up the couch. Meaning, don't pick it up and put it like in your hands and carry it somewhere. No, lift it up a little bit. I want to see if the remote is under the couch, if it fell under the couch. So, приподними and приподнять means to lift up slightly, like a few inches, right? So I can look under there. I'm not telling you to pick it up and carry it somewhere, fully pick it up when it's off the floor completely. Just lift it up slightly so I can look underneath. If you think about it, in English, if I wanted to say that, I would say lift up the couch. What if I wanted to say let's lift up the couch and move it somewhere? It's still the same exact verb, lift up. And the only reason why I understand what you mean is because of context. I can see that you don't want to move the couch, right? It's the same exact verb. But in Russian, that same exact verb, we don't need context to understand it. It's all in the meaning. Pripadnimi, raise it slightly. Like, lift it up slightly. That's why I love the prefixes with verbs. Because of such detail and precision that we can accomplish with those verbs. Next is... Применить. And применить means to apply. To apply a rule, 
to apply advice, to apply settings on your phone. I can guarantee you that if you go right now on your phone and you change the settings of the language to Russian, if you change something else, if you want to apply those settings, the verb right there on the button is going to be применить. To apply, применить. Maybe something else, применить. Применить совет, no, to apply advice. Применить. For some reason, I find it hard to, to think of an example right now, but применить is used a whole bunch. I just can't think of a sentence, really. But next prefix is pro. We also have three words for that. Pro means through, typically to completion or through something. Typically, but not always. As you can see right now, we have one, two, three verbs that don't have that meaning because sometimes certain verbs form unique interactions with certain prefixes. And that's why we can never predict their meaning 100%. It won't always follow the common meaning. But продолжить means to continue. Продолжить. You might know a word долгий, which means long in duration. And продолжить means to continue or to prolongate, okay? To make it longer. Продолжить. Продолжить means to continue something. Again, if you change settings on your let's say you're playing a game right and you're playing a game and your language is in russian new game load game but one button that you will see is to continue and in russian is going to be продолжить. so in games if you want to continue the game продолжить is used for that next verb is pragnat pragnat means to kick out and not really to only kick out like a person from the apartment, kick out a person from a party. Pragnat means like shoo away, okay? <laughs> and that can be pragnat like a little fly out the, out the room. Pragnat a person from the house. Pragnat, what else? Bad thoughts from your head. Just to scare away, to make something or someone leave, okay? I can say, мы прогнали комаров. We scared away, we shooed away insects, okay? Or uh, mosquitoes, rather. Комары is mosquitoes. So we made them leave, прогнать. Гнать by itself means to either drive fast, run fast, and doing something fast. But прогнать means to kick somebody out or something out. Next is проиграть. Проиграть means to lose. You might know a word играть, to play. But проиграть means to lose. How can, how can we just go from to play to to lose with just simply one prefix? But that's what it's going to do. Is that prefixes do have this kind of effect on words that it can change the meaning completely. So проиграть means to lose either game, lose a certain amount of money. I can say я проиграл тысячу долларов в казино. I lost a thousand dollars in the casino. That's not true about me, but I can make that example. Or I can say, я проиграл матч. I lost a match. Я проиграл матч. That's it. So, проиграть means to lose. Next is prefix с. Only gonna have two distinct meanings with с for today. С is one of those prefixes, prefixes that doesn't really have a lot of meaning in and of itself. And that's why it doesn't form a lot of connections, really. So the two that I have here are pretty unique, and you will see the meaning change a whole lot. First is сбежать. Сбежать means to leave or to run away. Сбежать can be used when the, pri when the prisoner escapes the prison. So сбежать, we can say, он сбежал из тюрьмы. He escaped the prison. So сбежать means to escape, to run away. Yes, I guess to run away is бежать. Typically, I would say we have another ver another verb very similar, убежать. So the prefix changed from с to у. Сбежать versus убежать. Убежать means to run away from someone. That you got a lot of distance between you and them. Let's say it's some hooligans on the street, right? They come to you and say, hey, give me your money. And you can run away. So you ran away from them. Okay? You created distance from them. But сбежать means to flee. Like you flee a place, typically. You, you went, you escaped something. 
We don't really say, I escaped the hooligans, right? I escaped the, the tough guys or the bad guys. No, we don't really say it like that, even in English. Typically, we escape a place, escape from, the, from an island, escape from the prison, escape from, I don't know, torturous situations, things like that. So, сбежать is used for that. What's actually funny, <laughs> actually, no, that's, don't be убежать, never mind, let me not go there. Next verb is скачать. Скачать means to download, скачать. We, without с, качать means to pump something, like pump air. Скачать. Скачать means to download something off the, off the internet. Скачать. And I'll say that that's really it. Я скачал фильм. I downloaded a movie. Я скачал фильм. Next, prefix за. За is one of those prefixes that is very influential. That it doesn't really have its own meaning besides just simply one that's not really common. Mm, it is common, common, but not too common. But za is going to change meanings of verbs almost entirely. So, the first one, zadumatsa. Zadumatsa means to start thinking hard about something. To get, to become very thoughtful about something. Like you, you just started thinking about it and went into deep think. Okay, zadumatsa. I can say, ya zadumalsa a problemia. I started thinking about a problem deeply. Truly got into my thoughts. Zadumatsa. While думать means just simply to think, задуматься means to think deeply about something. Next is an example of the common meaning that за will have on the verb is запеть. Запеть means to start singing. Запеть. За means to start. Пет means to sing. So запеть means to start singing. Let's say you in a jazz bar or something and you're just simply eating, eating your food. And then all of a sudden you hear... Somebody started singing somewhere. And you can say, Кто-то запел песню. Somebody started singing a song. Кто-то, somebody, запел, started singing, песню. A song. Okay? And the last word for the prefix за, we have four more verbs to go total, is заманить. And заманить means to trick somebody into doing something or to coming to a place. You can say, Она заманила меня. She tricked me to come here. Okay, она заманила. She lured me in. I would say that, yes, заманить means to lure. To lure somebody in. To lure them into a business or something or like a place. And yes, заманить means to trick somebody, to lie to them, to bring them to a certain spot. Okay, whether that be physical or literal. No, no, sorry, literal or figurative. That's the, that's the proper one. Literal or figurative. The money to lure somebody. Then we have last prefix for today, the prefix V. V means completely or entirely or out. That's the typical meaning of V as a prefix. V it means to turn off something. The very first verb we had for today was to turn something on, включить. But выключить means to turn something off. Выключить. To turn off a light, again, computer. Things like that. Выключить. Then we have высохнуть. Высохнуть means to dry out. You did your laundry. And then you can say, Мои вещи высохли. My clothes dried. Or dried up. Or dried out. They are not wet anymore. Мои вещи высохли. My clothes have dried. And final word for today is выдумать. Now, we know a verb думать. To think. What do you think выдумать would mean? Выдумать means to come up with something. With something, whether it's a lie or it's like a story that you thought up. Okay, to think something up. Выдумать. Maybe, again, you're thinking up a story to lie about something or just simply you're coming up with like a character or a story like Harry Potter or something. <laughs> okay, all of that is going to be выдумать. We've covered 20 verbs today. And you're going to have a list in the description to this podcast as well, just for your own reference. And I want to invite all of you guys to our Be Fluent Camp. We have the camps twice a year, and you can find the closest start date to today with the link in the description. Participate in our eight-week intensive course to learn more vocabulary, to study grammar, as well as speaking and listening too. And you can really expect a lot of growth 
from the from the camp in just eight weeks we do intensive learning but you also get feedback on your work and just some overall guidance to your learning okay hope you join with the link in the description and i'll see you all there like i said pricing the start dates and the weekly curriculum is going to be in the description and uh, see you all there Пока-пока.